It's me, Mikey Pipes, with Peter. Air Force Snun got his back blown out at the gym by a guy named Bubba. You can check out the Mikey Pipes Uncensored, the shorts version of that. Anyway, we are on our way to a service call in Merrick, which is in Nassau County on Long Island, New York. We're going to a Bryant 16 Sierra central air conditioning system that we installed. We means me, Mikey Pipes and Pipe Doctor in June of 2016. We have not been there in over three years and the system is no bueno. It's not cooling. So you are going to see how we did systems back in the day, six years ago. Very little has changed since then, ladies and gentlemen. Still prompt, reliable, and professional service and installations. That's what Pipe Doctor does. Techniques maybe got a little refined since then, but I don't know. We're gonna see what's going on with this system. It could be thermostat, maybe it's power, but something electrically related and since Bryant is made by a carrier, I'm gonna go, I, and after since yesterday's capac, uh, contact on a brand new two month old system, basically burnt up, I got my money on maybe a contactor or a capacitor. You know, they, they're using Chinesium metals in their goods. So let's go see what's going on guys. Smash that thumbs up button, I appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Thank you. Let's get going. Oh. God said on the first day, let there be light. Was it the first day? I think so, yeah. Yes, we have a light. So I was thinking maybe, just maybe, the float switch or the uh, condensate sensor was a trip, but no, we look good. Okay. So we put this bad boy in six years ago. Okay, everything there looks good as well. All right, so let's check out the uh, the unit outside. Okay. All right, let's go to the outdoor unit now. There it is. My whip came out a little bit though, but put my ear up to it. I have a hum. Ooh. I have a hot condenser fan motor. All right. Hold it for a second. I just want to show them the right and proper way to pull a disconnect. Left hand behind your back. Don't wear a pound of gold. I'm going to hear it anyway. Mikey Pipes, when are you going to learn your lesson? Okay. We have a you put your ear against the panel, you can hear the hum of the contactor, all right? I already checked the circuit breaker panel. We had old breakers, didn't appear to be tripped. One marked hot tub is in the off position. Maybe they have a hot tub, maybe they don't. Or maybe that over there, maybe that's that. But when you put my hand on top of this condenser fan motor, it's hot as F, hot as F. And on the Mikey Pipes Uncensored channel, I'll call it like it is hot as All right. So, Peter's gonna grab the Vito TPXXL tool bag, and we're gonna start diagnosing this machine. Right now, I got my money on capacitor. Okay, while Peter is grabbing that capacitor, I wanna take a moment to just visually inspect the condition of the system, making sure that we're not wearing a fur coat. But I'm also gonna grab the HIK Micro thermal pocket thermal imaging camera. I want you to see heat. All right, this is the HIK Micro. This is the pocket thermal imaging camera. You can see Peter there. Let's take a look at the condensing unit. I'm trying to avoid glare, but take a look at that condenser fan motor. Look how hot that condenser fan motor is. See, we have, looks like, a max temperature of 92 degrees Celsius. That's hot. And down there, there's our compressor. Take a look at that. 
See that? There's our compressor. So we're definitely, definitely out on thermal uh, overload. We're gonna use the cool presser. We're gonna have to get the hose. <clears throat> we're gonna have to cool things down once we diagnose possibly, possibly a defective dual capacitor. So Peter, here is the Milwaukee M12 impact driver with the 516s by Malco. It's 516s and quarter inch, all in the same bit, it's reversible. Peter's gonna remove the two screws that secure the panel. You may have to loosen up that one too, sorry. This one and the one on the opposite. Just loosen it up a little bit. Those gotta come all the way up. There you go. And we're gonna take a peek inside the six year old Bryant condensing unit. Okay, so first things first, our contactor is pulled in and you can see she's got a little belly to her. She's definitely Pragers. See this? She is definitely Pragers. This is a 45 7.5, right? This is a uh, Chinesium probably, right? But this is the failure point. Now, Peter's gonna grab the needle nose. Mm -hmm. I want you to short out or touch in between each terminal to gr potentially discharge any charge that's in the system. Just touch it. Touch two terminals together. Don't worry, it's not gonna bite you. Are you scared? There you go, now the other set. Do more, just get the, get the thing in there. There you go, see? You can also use your fingers. Ted Cook, you know that guy in South Carolina? Mm -hmm. We're gonna be neighbors soon, all right? He likes to use his fingers. I don't, time. and I, I love the guy. I don't got, I don't got balls of steel like he does. I'm scared Seriously. of, I'm scared of getting <clears throat> zapped. Yeah. Now, let's pull off the wires, all right? Like that. Okay. Now, very carefully, this is what you need to do. Remove that quarter inch screw and make sure we don't touch anything over there. Because if we short out anything to the coil side of the contactor, we're gonna blow the fuse inside the air handler. And it's hot as balls up in her master bedroom. I don't feel like spritzing. Yeah. So take that quarter inch screw out of there and you'll take the whole thing up out of there and then we'll test this capacitor. Okay. And one of the things we're also gonna do here is give her a, uh, a good preventative maintenance. Now let's see if there's any temperature to the capacitor. I have temperature to the contact look how red see that color mm -hmm. wow okay any, any temperature to the see look, look at this thing this thing freezes up all right eh, no temperature to that but we have temperature definitely on that condenser fan motor peter's got the fluke multimeter i keep the fluke 902 fc this is the clamp meter designed for what i work with okay let's test between, okay, let's pop quiz again, Peter. What terminal has four? Common. What terminal has three? Uh, compressor. What is it also called? What is it labeled on capacitors as? Uh, uh, <laughs> Say hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. You forgot. I know that one's fine, though. What does that say? That says Herm. Herm. You know what Herm stands for? I don't. Hermetically sealed compressor. And um, what's the one with two or one? Uh, it's going to be thin. Okay, so let's test between common and Herm. No bueno. Common and fan? No bueno. And you want to do between the left, left and right titties? I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need a 70, sorry, a 45, 7.5, okay? We also need the cool presser. We need the hose, right? Because we need to cool off this compressor. And if we're gonna go in there, we're also gonna uh, do a tune-up and maintenance on this on this condenser. We're gonna get the uh, the Viper, the Venom Pack, All right? We're gonna get the container, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do, we haven't been here in four years. It's yeah. time to do some maintenance on this machine. You heard her say it yourself. It's going to cost me. Yes, it's going to cost you. And if you want to save a bundle, switch your car insurance to Geico, where you can save fifteen minutes, where you can save fifteen percent or more in fifteen minutes. <laughs> okay. There's our compressor. She's hot, as you can see. 
She's hot. It's a cool little guy by HIK, HIK Micro. Thanks for sending this to me so I can share it with the community and possibly we'll have a giveaway with this. I already have a thermal imaging camera. I have the other one, the B20 or whatever, the B40. This is cool though. See, there's Peter. <laughs> All right. We have the refrigeration tex technologies, the Viper Venom Pack chemical on the condensing coil, both inside and outside. Outside, just to clean up the grates a little bit, you know, those, the coil covers. We're gonna let that sit and soak for about 10 minutes. In the meantime, Peter's gonna rinse out the new cow gun, the coil gun, to make sure she's good to go for the next use. I have my new capacitor in place. Unfortunately, it's a Titan Pro. As my long-term viewers and subscribers know, up until this year, that's what we installed. I've learned from the community that the Titan HDs are far superior. So now as I deplenish stock, I'm replenishing with the Titan HD. <sighs> Got a little bit of water on there from when I was washing the coil down. But we'll put a little mark on there with the sharpie today's date so any future service technician is not my company at least they know what's going on okay we have successfully washed this condensing coil much better now Got a little bit of moss on there maybe we'll get the brush and clean that off right now i have the cool presser on to cool off this compressor get her out of thermal lockout and get the system up and running. One thing I didn't do was spin the compressor. Let's, I mean the condenser fan motor. Yeah, she spins freely. Carefully keep her right there. Yeah, it looks like she lost her load right there. She's leaking the oils. So this condenser fan motor is not gonna have that much longer to live. You know, it's a sealed motor. So when you leak out those, those lubricants, no bueno probably because it was overheated because we had a bad dual capacitor. We haven't been here in three and a half, four years. Unfortunately, that's what happens. Hopefully, hopefully she'll still work for some time. We're gonna let that run for a few minutes and then get the show on the road. All right, now we're using the cool presser to cool that's our fan motor and also the compressor at the same time. <laughs> cool little gadget, this is the cool presser just attaches to any standard garden hose. It's magnetic and you can cool off the compressor. It's designed for it. I believe this is made by Sub. They bought the patent from, uh, I'm gonna guess an HVAC tech because it's the only guy smart enough to figure out that you need this. But the cool presser. Cooling off the condenser fan motor and compressor that are both out on thermal overload due to defective dual run capacitor which is likely caused lack of maintenance, dirty condensing coil. Are you ready? You want to do the honors? Disconnect. Yeah, I want to plug it in. You want me to plug it in? In case it zaps, it goes buzz. You know, it's unplug it quickly. Baruch Hashem. Look at that. Thank God. The condenser fan motor is operational. And so is the compressor. Ain't that tits? <laughs> Shout out to Cool Presser. Wow. Awesome tool. I've used this several times. It's pretty, pretty cool. I wish I would have invented this little doodad. I would be a billionaire in my own Taj Mahal. But the Bryant is now up and running. We identified the problem, realized what could cause its failure corrected the potential failure, cooled off the system, restored power, and we're operational. Let's go give the good news to the homeowner. All right, let's go say hi. Ma'am? Yes. Hi. Would you like layman's explanation, more technical explanation, or just me to tell you that I fixed it? Um, 
I'll do both. I like to I like to be educated. Okay. Uh, there's a part inside the condenser outdoor unit okay. that gives the compressor and the fan more power to run and start and things like that. Okay. Um, consider it like a toy having a 9 volt battery, uh, but it also gets 120 volts, you know, or 240 volts from the wall outlet. Okay. But if it doesn't have the 9 volt battery, it's not going to do anything. Okay. Which is what your system was doing. Okay. So this battery, which normally lasts, I don't know, about 7 to 10 years. Uh, didn't. It lasted six because okay. it's how old the system is. Okay. The reason why it died, it had accelerated wear and tear. The, the coil, you know, that thing that, that looks like a car radio wraps around the whole unit, yeah. is dirty. And okay. the dirtier that is, the more amperage that the system uses. And again, it dr sucks more from this battery until it doesn't give any more and it dies. So if you had come to do maintenance, would we have had that problem? Is that something you Likely, to because that's one of the things that we test. Okay. So picture the 9 volt battery, let's say maybe two years ago we tested nine volt battery instead of giving nine volts now it's getting eight okay it's, it's slowly dying you'll probably get another year or two out of it but let's replace it anyway okay right but then we would also notice the coil being dirty would have washed that right. okay. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh the answer is yes more than likely we would have found that okay. so what was happening is the unit was getting power and the compressor and the fan were getting power to run but they weren't running because it didn't have that nine volt battery okay this battery is called a dual capacitor okay um so now the compressor is not running because it doesn't have the capacitor to give it. Right. And the condenser fan row is not running also for the same reason. They both, they're both getting power. They're both hot as hell. Right. Right. So they lock themselves out on what we call thermal lockout. Right. It actually is so internally hot that it doesn't want to even want to st try to start anymore. Okay. So we use a device called a cool presser. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. It's basically like this magnet that hooks up to a hose and lets water flow through it. So we stick it right on top of the compressor and it cools the compressor off with water and hence cooling okay. itself off. Okay. It's like putting it like in an ice bath. Okay. We also did the same thing with the condenser fan motor, okay. pulling that off. Okay. So I re And while we're doing that, we washed with chemicals the coil, so that's okay. clean. Okay. We replaced the dual capacitor okay. and put everything back together. And if you feel the vents are coming out, cool now. Okay. So was this <laughs> would this have happened eventually or did the, the heat accelerate it? The heat definitely accelerated it. Okay. Uh, but it would have happened eventually anyway. Right, okay. But definitely higher temperatures. You were tomorrow's technically a heat wave because three consecutive days over 90 degrees. Right. Uh, it would have died anyway. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Even if it was like the top of the line capacitor or the, the worst, cheapest one. Right. It still would have died eventually. Okay. The heat accelerated it. Okay. But you think it died earlier of lack of, overall lack of, because lack of, of maintenance. maintenance. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, so we would have probably picked up on it. Because yeah. it, it doesn't just die instantly overnight. Right. So we, and it's a lot of times they basically just like miniature explosions. Like the whole thing swells up yeah. like, it looks like you're pregnant actually. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> right? So it's, wow. it swells up that big yeah. where the metal just can't have anymore and inside just, just yeah. gives way. Uh, yours was a little bit, a little bump on the top, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, the compressor, yeah. Okay. the dual capa capacitor is done. And then when I felt the fan motor, I was like, Hot yeah, yeah. You can cook eggs on top of it. It's hot. I believe it. 95 degrees Celsius. Wow. I, I have to that measures in Celsius. Yeah, I haven't yeah. figured out how to convert it to Fahrenheit, but I know yeah. it's hot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm and it, it's been so long. Exactly. So and now, it, should that ha um, thing go off the cold surface, you think? No, I have to figure that out because i actually never seen that before on the thermostat. So let's go figure that out. All right. Switch from cool to off. The cold for surface is gone. It's 81 degrees up here. Set to 74. Let's wait for the click. There it is. Compressor kicked on. I heard the hum in the background. And now we're good. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you run a successful service call. We're here for just about an hour. Always do above and beyond. And I am going to keep it real because I always do. All right? You didn't see it, but there was exchange of currency from one party to another. So she paid the bill with mostly with cash and a little bit with credit card. And then she proceeds to whip out a stack of 20s. And here, I want you guys to split it. And I'm looking at, at first I thought it was like, oh, it was 80 bucks, right? Because I saw, I thought it was at least three or four $20 bills. And I said, no, 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 just two is more than plenty. It was actually a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. Now this is where, this is where you gotta be a mensch. This is where you gotta be, just do the right thing. We're there for an hour. The bill, let's say the bill is 600 bucks, right? Hypothetically. She wanted to give us a hundred dollar tip. That is crazy. I said, ma'am, you are way too generous. 
I was like, if anything, I'll take a 20, get Peter a 20, and that's more than enough. If we were here all day, replacing a compressor, replacing the system, then I guess $100 is appropriate to split up between a couple guys, but I'm sorry. Yeah. And I told Peter, as soon as he walked out the door, I was like, listen, I know $50 each would have been really epic right now. I was like, but that's just not the right thing to do. And she'll remember that. that listen, we're not taking all of her, we're not taking all of her money. We're nice guys. And I said, listen, take that extra 60 bucks and put it to your gas tank because F Joe Biden. So thank you so much for tuning in, watching to this video. I hope you learned the fat, the cool presser. I hope I showed you how to properly test a dual run capacitor identifying what terminals are which based on the number of posts on each terminal. But regardless, let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. And until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe.